this kid where the heck he's been. Just, he's got a sheet over the... Okay, that's Pat. Pat, uh, come on, we're doing a video. Uh, Pat, uh, what? Pat, uh, we're doing a vi Are you? Pat, uh, video. Uh, Pat. Uh, <laughs> video. Welcome to the Gaming Guillotine, where I execute the poorly executed. My nickname's Guillotine, and this right here is the Gaming Guillotine. Those of you that follow my video work may know that I sometimes have trouble finding the motivation and determination to find a video topic, but thanks to my wonderful cameraman, I'll be doing a video game series that's going to be drawing some polarizing reactions. Let's start with some history. Created in roughly 1982, my Little Pony was a ploy by Hasbro to try and get parents to buy little girls their cute pink pony toys. They back-ended this effort with a TV show. Nothing dreadful, but nothing terribly spectacular either. That TV show went through a few various iterations, and is what is primarily known as the My Little Pony franchise, however it's always also been an effort to try and sell those cheap little plastic toys. Jumping back a slight bit, these various iterations were known as Generations, the original series being Generation 1. And in 2010, the series was rebooted again, bringing us Generation 4. There was something surprising about Generation 4. Something uncanny. Something it's hard to put your finger on. And something that garnered the attention of more than just the intended demographic of little girls. Dubbed with the secondary title, Friendship is Magic, it garnered a huge following of males. Grown males. Sounds weird, you might be thinking. <laughs> Well, it is. That's how I started as well. And it started innocently enough. I saw someone bringing it up on a message board. I'd see a video or two pop up here and there. People started to incorporate them in memes. I asked some of my friends around the internet. They told me to stay away. This only made me more curious. So I started to watch the show. And then I watched more. And then I started getting the inside jokes. And by then it was already too late. There's no helping me anymore. But enough of me talking about the bizarre things I like to try and spend my money on. I wanted to cover the video game aspect of the series. I've had a lot of experience with the show, but I... Alan. Oh, sorry. As I was saying, I wanted to cover it from an unbiased... Alan! And yes, like any TV show poised to try and sell things to kids, it had a lot of cheap video game tie-ins. I'm not terribly acquainted with the quality of these things, but as can be assured with most other things that are along these lines, it's probably not good. And today I'm going to be talking about the mobile games, stuff you can play on your phone or iPod or iPad, anything that you can just bring with you and comes installed. And so first up on the perspective chopping block, the mobile games. First on the list is My Little Pony Puzzle Party. This one's fairly standard mobile fare that you can find a dime a dozen on any particular app store. Your goals can vary a little bit from level to level, but the base game is essentially clearing whatever objectives you need at the time. There are matching tiles on the screen, and you tap them when they're paired up with others of the same color to clear them. And your goal can change from trying to get certain items to the bottom of the screen, to trying to clear particular obstacles, or even if you're just trying to get a certain score within a certain amount of time. I'm struggling, but I really can't find anything terribly funny about this. It's the kind of thing that Candy Crush made its bread and butter on. It's an amusing little time waster, and like I said, there's not too much funny about it. Although there might be a little bit of spicy controversy attached. And it could be the reason why behind there's a little bit of a problem with the updating. See, the level progression seems to tie somewhat loosely into the episodes of the TV show. And as you go through the levels, you'll come across scenes from the show happening in tandem. However, this seems to stop at the start of Season 2. I don't know for certain, but I found a few articles published not too long ago that said that Hasbro and its developer behind this game were in a bit of legal trouble because they basically copied and pasted a bunch of elements from a competitor's game into this one. I don't know this for certain because I haven't really been following the court case. Maybe this would be a task for Leonard French if any of you know who he is. But let me say one thing. If there is in fact just copying of other stuff, rather than putting the time, money, and effort in to actually make something quality that more people will actually be willing to give money to, Hasbro. Why aren't you funding the independents who are doing great stuff with your franchise as fans? I'm gonna go on a tirade if I stay fixated on this one, so I'm just gonna move on from here. 
Next game on the chopping block is one I found in the iOS store called My Little Pony Harmony Quest. From what I gathered, the stained glass windows in Canterlot that depict our heroes doing whatever they do from episode to episode have been broken, and the shards have been stolen by the changelings. And each individual level comes down to you and your party chasing them through the streets of Ponyville trying to get them back. However, along the way, you come across a bunch of various obstacles which make little to no sense. Actually, before we get to that, let's get to another segment. Before each level, you have to pick the characters you're going to play as. At the very start of the game, you can only pick two, and three total characters are available to you. However, you'll notice that there are up to six total chairs for the ponies you can play as. I smell paywall, and I was right! Now granted, the game is free to play up to a point, more of a trial period. However, after the point where you need to select four ponies in order to continue, you're basically stuck mercilessly tapping the screen, hoping to continue, and instead you just get the names getting rapidly shouted at you. Twilight Pinkies Apple Twilight Pinkies Apple Twilight Pinkies. But back onto the games while you're running. Each of the ponies you choose has certain abilities that are used to match unique scenarios that you come across, and some of these are just what? For instance, in this one right here, apparently there's a key in a haystack, and you can't proceed until you get rid of the haystack to open the door. Why not just go around the building? And then as you make your way from obstacle to obstacle, you have to tap rapidly on the screen to make the ponies run. Next up, we have to have Pinkie Pie dance in order to appease a cat. I don't know about you, but if I was a cat and all of a sudden a gigantic horse started dancing in front of me, I'd be freaking even more out. Oh, also, assemble a wagon. There's no reason for it, just assemble a wagon. It's barely blocking your path. You could probably run around it, but assemble a wagon. Oh, and the changelings apparently kidnapped one while they were trying to steal the glass. And their cocoon is hanging in the middle of Ponyville. Why is there not massive panic? Also, open a lever. The door opens. Next! If you have Pinkie Pie in your team, you can detect a trap and do nothing about it. You just know it's there now. You don't disable it or anything. And then once you get to the end of the running level, you beat up whoever it was that stole the thing mercilessly, and then get the item back and put it back in the window. But going back to that paywall for a second, the paywall's not subtle either. Each individual pony costs $4, or you can buy all of them for $8. Or again, you can just have that name remix. Twilight, Pinky, uh, Apple, Twilight. The next one I'd like to cover is the My Little Pony Friendship Celebration. Explore Equestria! Uh, great. I, I played for the sake of reviewing this once. Wasn't fun. Best party ever. Don't you bail on me. That sounds like a threat to me. Don't you ever bail on me. Oh, okay. You need to start the game by picking your guests that are coming to the party. I guess this comes with certain figures? I didn't initially figure this out at the time, so I just stood there trying to take a picture of my face all confused. But if you don't have any of the associated figures, you can go ahead and just have the computer pick some for you. And so we're here at the first party. I'm really not sure what I'm doing here right now. So as I do with most mobile games where I don't know what's going on, I just start tapping wildly. And boy, it becomes real apparent that this thing was meant for younger audiences really fast. I mean, if I want to shuffle things around a room, I'm just going to go ahead and rearrange my video game collection again. Where do I put you? Take a picture to remember the moment! Oh, well, that's another one off the checklist. Next up is the tea party! Is that chocolate milk? I hope that's cocoa. And of course, I get to treat everyone. And then spread stuff to other ponies' plates, because no one can help themselves. And then because they all made me angry, I'm gonna put lemonade in their chocolate, because I'm miserable like that. And then we come to mini-games that vary when you're going from location to location. And this is obviously intended as a party game. However, I came across a few issues when I was trying to attempt a few of these things. One, if you're actually in a party game scenario and things are getting rather hectic, you're not going to be able to have every single person accommodated on the screen at once. I tested this on an iPod, and I wasn't really able to get it to recognize more than two taps on the screen at any given time. And I can only imagine trying to get four people's fingers to use this at the same time, even if they're very small, girly fingers. Maybe other devices accommodate more fingers to tap, but I don't know. But anyway, this game at hand is a simple matching thing. Whoever gets more matches of their mark is the winner. The end. I'm already bored to tears. I'm moving on to the last game now. The last mobile game I'm doing is My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. This is one of those mobile games where you set up a village, and when you set it up, you build the houses that come with your characters from the show, and businesses for them to work where they acquire in-game currency. Or currencies. We'll come back to that later. 
But yeah, it incorporates things like ponies from the show that you can level up so they can acquire different jobs and earn more various currencies. And there's a variety of minigames that you can do to level each individual pony up, including stargazing, apple picking, and a few other ones. However, each one of these individual games is poorly designed and irritating. For instance, I don't know about you, but making it so a game with falling objects that you have to catch and making it so that it's impossible to actually catch them, that doesn't exactly seem like good or engaging game design. Or are you just supposed to weigh the options that you have and struggle to make a decision? It's a stupid little mobile apple catching game. Who's making these constellations? I'm wondering if they just got a random Yahoo off the street to say, oh yeah, those stars together look like a lollipop. Or those ones over there look like a chest. Oh, that one's a present. Growing up, I remember hearing about our constellations having these gigantic epic legends behind them. That's the guitar of the random bum down the street. But let's move on to another one of the mini games, the minecart segment. This is just kind of one of those infinite runners that gets more and more difficult the farther you go, and you have to just try and keep the cart going until you derail. For what it is, it is a little amusing, and again, a nice little time waster. You collect the coins and whatever other goodies that you find along the tracks. Jump over barrels, and people going the opposite way on the tracks in, you know, open defiance of gravity, but whatever. Whoa! I just offed that sucker! <laughs> I just landed straight on his head and he died. Who says these cute little games aren't violent? But anyway, who, what kind of reckless individual is letting these other characters go into the mine just so that they can play and use their equipment when there is open explosives sitting around and other characters that are openly working and actively trying to do their job while you're just bouncing around them and you're actively killing them? I need to calm down, it's just a stupid little mobile game that they didn't really think about too much. I will give credit where credit is due on one thing, it does receive regular content updates. Now for the next mini game, and this thing is one of the banes of my existence. It's a rhythm game, and you'd think I'd be all over that crap, but no! One, it's tied to Equestria Girls, and Equestria Girls sucks. <laughs> and two, they really half-assed it on a lot of the elements in this game. First of all, the soundtrack options are only options from the actual movie, and like I said, the movie sucked. Some of the songs were okay at best. But even if you are able to put up with the music, the rhythm game in and of itself isn't good. Now, I'm a longtime veteran of rhythm games, rock band, guitar hero, other things of that nature, elite beat agents. I know a good rhythm game. Good rhythm games make it so that whatever is going on on screen actually syncs up with the music. This one doesn't. It does for the most part, but when it gets into precision, you really don't have to try all that hard. And it gets infuriating to the point where I actually choose to play this with the music off. What is one of the base principles of making a rhythm game? That whatever you need to do on the screen that is rhythm based syncs up with the music. And not only that, it doesn't punish you for not actually playing the game. As you can see right here, I just decided to stop tapping halfway through, and the character's like, mm, okay, and there's no health bar, there's no risk, there's no aversion, you can just pick right back up and say, oh, I'm gonna keep tapping to the not music! By and far, this is probably the worst part of the game for me personally. But that's only the worst part for me actually playing it. There's actually something worse about this game, and that is its ham-handed attempt to try and wring you of all the money you've got. I'm not exaggerating here. This game is rife with microtransactions. You can pay for costumes and three different kinds of currency that are used for various props, unlocking extra rounds of minigames, and buying ponies for your village. Without sales and discounts, would you like to hear roughly how much you'd need to spend to unlock all the content in this game? Granted, I calculated this a few months back. What procrastination problem! But that means unlocking all the ponies, props, and buildings that you can directly buy for these various currencies. Roughly 40700 22 gems. That doesn't sound too malicious on its surface. However, you need to know the ratio at which you can buy these gems. The actual ratio of gems as opposed to money for this game is 700 gems for $25. Now let's do the calculations again. 40,722 gems. If we do the math, that comes out to about $1,454.35. And that's not including the ponies they want you to unlock via their in-game lottery system that might give you one of the things you can unlock, and you can only unlock it that way. And again, it's a lottery system, and you have to use the currency to use the lottery system. And not only that, they have the currency tied into some of the objectives of the game. You have to buy in-game items in order to progress with the story or whatever it is. 
Now, it is possible to play this game without spending any money, but if you intend to wait on the in-game currency drops, then good luck. If you're lucky, you get the important currency, gems, at a rate of maybe five gems a day, and that's if you play every day often enough to take advantage of all the ways you might get them. If you wanted to beat the game and get all the content by waiting for drops, it would take 22 years, four months, and three days. That is obscene. And for what? What is that best a digital pony aquarium? You can get a real aquarium for cheaper and at least get the satisfaction of caring for a real life pet. The mini games aren't even great. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a shameless, unabashed cash grab and should be written off for what is at best the equivalent to having an ant farm for your little characters from the show. I found Derpy in a box. Why are you hiding? Are you hiding from this game's microtransactions? I couldn't say I blame you. You are best background pony. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and bash people that legitimately spend this money and get enjoyment out of it. If you make your own money and get enjoyment out of playing this game the way it wants you to, then fair enough. However, putting these systems into games that are openly tailored for smaller children is exploitative. And this is what leads to many news stories you hear of parents finding obscene credit card bills because they didn't put the proper passwords on their credit card lock. I'll even admit myself, I've spent a fair amount of money on this thing, even though at time of writing, I wholeheartedly regret it, because this is unethical. These developers are openly exploiting the worst parts of our desires. I'm not going to go any farther or get too heavy-handed on this, but just know what you're getting into. You know, as much as it pains me to say it, I spent way too much money on this iPod, so I'm... The Gaming Guillotine will be back after this short medical break. However, he did manage to save the iPod. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. This is the first part of my two-part My Little Pony video game franchise review, and I'm still relatively new to this YouTube thing, so if there's any ways you think I can improve this, feel free to let me know. And if you can think of things for me to review in the future, go ahead and type them in the comments. Also, if you can subscribe, that'd help me out a lot. I just want to try and keep making videos, gain traffic, and have fun while I'm doing it. I've got some more of my own videos over here on the right-hand side. Feel free to check some of those out. And until next time, God bless all of you.